Hello everyone, Mark Reed here from Sensei. Resource management can be a complex undertaking and many organizations struggle with the effort required to maintain good data from which to make good business decisions. The challenge is to match project needs to people's availability, which are both constantly changing. There are some clear industry standards and best practices that have emerged and these produce far better results than the old way of doing things. In this video, I'll walk you through some of that process and show you examples of how it's done. Here's a project that's currently underway. It's one of eight projects under the acquisitions program, and we're managing all these projects in channels inside of Microsoft Teams. When this was still a proposal, we built the resource plan and had it approved along with the business case. The team consists of two developers, a system architect, and a project manager. Now, we've just identified that we need a SQL DBA to support us part-time for the next five weeks. I'm not sure who's available, and I'm not the resource manager, so I'll search for the generic role of DBA SQL. I get a little preview of the folks who are in that role, and what their availability is over the time period I'm looking at. I'll add a note to the resource manager. Any chance Dan or Mary could help me out for the next five weeks? Then I'll submit and save this request. Now, let's look at what the resource manager sees. I've logged in as the line manager for the DBAs, and I can see the request that just came in. I see the comment from the project manager, as well as the total hours, and how they're distributed over the next five weeks. Since I'm very familiar with this project, and I know that Dan and Mary do indeed have availability, I'll go ahead and assign Mary to the project, send a short note back to the project manager, and approve and save. Having project managers and resource managers collaborate in a single tool is key, along with real-time data to monitor any exceptions. Again, the process is for the project manager to submit a resource request, which you can think of as the resource budget for the project. The resource manager gets to approve these requests and allocate named individuals to the project. Now the project manager can build out the detailed schedule with task assignments for the team, staying within the approved allocations, of course. And the key here, is that this can be done across a number of different project management tools. In a typical portfolio, organizations will have proposals that have not yet been approved but are requesting resources. There will also be approved projects with just a high-level resource plan, and then the active projects with the detailed scope and assignments. To get a complete picture of demand on these resources, our reports and dashboards must be able to view both proposed and approved allocations and hold up these to the actual work and tasks on projects. For resource conflicts across active projects, the look ahead reports will show the remaining availability based on allocations to projects over the coming weeks. In the example here, Albert has been committed to work on four projects which already has him over allocated by four hours in the next several weeks. In addition to that, there is a proposed resource request pending approval, which would over allocate him even more. Another important consideration is to understand where projects are utilizing our resources without formal approval to do so. This can happen when projects run late or if someone bypasses the system to assign work to our team members. In this view, we're comparing the approved allocations to assigned work on projects. It looks like the 2021 customer support project is assigning a lot more hours to Albert than what we had approved. He's approved to work on the project for 16 hours in October, but has 169 hours of assigned work which is 153 more than we agreed to. For longer term planning, we want to identify future resource demand and bottlenecks based both on the pending requests from proposals and work already approved and in progress. 
we typically want to see that demand by role or by department. This gives us a clear picture of where bottlenecks exist in the organization and where we may need to hire additional staff. At Sensei, we think the practice of resource management doesn't need to be hard or mysterious. And in fact, it benefits from more simplicity and more transparency. If you're not sure how to get started, please reach out to us at senseiq.com or by following the links in the notes for this video.